Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 612. Please turn to it, page 612. Some gradient problems. Let's take a look at number 31. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Right, let's take a look at it here. In number 31, it says that there are two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen and a molecule of water. So we have hydrogen and oxygen and they are in the ratio of 2 to 1. The question simply is, if you have 40, 40, if you have 51 molecules, how many hydrogens do we have? Well, if you have 51 molecules, just multiply by 51, that's what it is. Uh, 2, there you go. You're going to have 102 hydrogen atoms and 51 oxygen atoms, obviously. The answer is 1 or 2. This is too simple. It's too silly. Number 32. Number 32, we're given an equation. And the question simply is, when x is equal to 1, what's the value of a? When x is equal to 1, what's the value of a? So let's just substitute 1, 1 for x and see what happens. 1 minus half a equals 0. Bring half a to this side or bring 1 to this side, whatever you like, is the same thing. So half a is equal to 1. Multiply both sides by 2 and we're done. a is equal to 2. a is equal to 2. There you go which makes perfect sense because when x is equal to 1 if a is equal to 2, 2 times 2, this 2 and this 2 will cancel out 1 minus 1 equals 0 number 33 we are told that x plus 2y is equal to 10 and 3x plus 6y is equal to c and the question simply is, what's the value of C? What we simply have to realize here, we have to simply realize just by looking at it, we don't have to do anything here. Here we have x, here we have 3x, three times as many. Here we have 2y, here we have 6y. The second equation that they give us is three times this side actually, the left hand side, is three times that side. If that's the case, if 3x plus 6y is three times x plus 2y, then it must also equal, if x plus 2y equals 10, then it must equal 10 times 3. And that's your c. c is equal to 10 times 3, or 30. Number 34. Number 34, let's see what it has to say. In number 34, we are told that we traveled eleven miles in twenty-six minutes. What's the speed in what's the speed in miles per hour? They want us to give they want us to give them the speed in miles per hour. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Set it up with a proportion problem, that's the simplest way to go here. So we, here we have miles and minutes. And we are told that we can travel 11 miles in 26 minutes. 11 miles in 26 minutes. The question is, how many miles are we going to travel in one hour? In one hour, which is 60 minutes. There we go. Cross multiply and that's all. x is equal to, x is equal to 11 times 60, 11 times 60 over 26, 
divide top and bottom by 2, we get 13, and this becomes 30. Now I'm going to pause here for a second, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue with this thing, I'm going to continue with this thing. If you want to pick up your calculator and finish this off with a calculator, be my guest. But I would very much prefer if you stay with me in the journey. Even if in the real exam you intend to use the calculator, just stay with me in the journey. Let's see what it takes us, okay? Because I don't have a calculator. So let's just see what happens. So we have this. Let's divide top and bottom by 13 now. This is where you have to pay attention. If you divide top and bottom by 13, this 13 will go away. And 30 has two 13s. Two 13s are 26. After we take away 26 from 30, we have a remainder of 4. And that 4 needs to be divided by 13 as well. So what we end up here is 2 and 4 13 times 11. 2 and 4 13 by times 11. I'm going to do it on the top. and 4 13 times 11 or if you prefer if it makes it easier 11 times 2 and 4 13 I think it might be easier for you to understand what's going on let's see what happens okay pay attention 11 times 2 is 22 and 11 times 4 is 44 over 13 this is what I have it does not take as long as it's taking right now because I'm explaining everything. If you know what you're doing, it actually goes very fast. I need the room obviously, so I have to raise it now. But you understand here, we had 60 and 26, we divided by 2 and 26 became 13 and 60 became 30. And then we divided 30 and 13 by 13. 13 divided by 13 is 1. And 30 has 2 13. 2 13 is a 26. After we take away 26, we had a remainder of 4. So in other words, 30 divided by 13 is 2 and 4 13. That's what we have here, times 11. 44 divided by 13, 13 times 3, 13 times 3 is 39. So that's 3, so it becomes 25, it becomes 3, and after we take away 39 from 44, we get 5 13. 5 13. So far so good? The question is what happens next? Well, here's what happens next. You have two choices at this point again also. You can either understand the fact that 513, think of this as a scale, think of this in terms of scale. This is 39, which is 13 times 3, and 13 times 4. As I told you, as I told you a second ago, I don't expect you to do all of this in a real exam, but while you're practicing, it doesn't hurt to exercise the brain a little bit, just to, just to get, get a little bit better at numbers. This is 39, and that is 52. How do I know this 52? I don't. I, I don't know what the hell 13 times 4 is, but I do know that if I double 13, I get 26, and if I double the 26 again, I get 52. That's what that is. Think of this in terms of scale. The scale is all the way from 39 to 52, and we are all the way, you see, if you divide, if you divide 5 by 13, if you divide 5 by 13, the very first thing we're going to do is put a 0, put a decimal, it becomes a 50. We are all the way out here. We are all the way out here. We are much closer to 4 than we are to 3. That's one way of looking at it. That's one way of looking at it. And therefore, since the question is asking us to give the answer the nearest tenth, therefore, this quantity, when it's rounded to nearest tenth, it's going to be 0 0.4 or 25 point. 25, not 24. 25, there you go. It's not 25.3 because in order for it to be 25.3, you would have to be closer halfway through here. Halfway somewhere is here. Because from here to here is 13, which means it's 6.5. Halfway is 6.5. 39 times 6 is 45. So it's 45 and a half is the halfway mark. We are way beyond 45. We are all the way up to 50. Again, you have to picture that in your mind. You, don't, you shouldn't have to draw all this thing. You have to picture in your mind 50. Well, 50 is going to be all the way up to closer to 50, 52, not 39. This is scale from 39 to 52. Now, if you do want to do all of this thing in your brain, if you don't want to do it, well, you can just do it longhand. It doesn't take that long. I'm going to show you how to do it longhand very quickly. So we're going to get 3, 39, and then what happens? We have 11. Okay, watch what happens. We have 11. We stick a 0, but we don't need to continue our journey. We don't have to continue our journey. We simply understand that 13 times 5 is 65. 
13 times 5 is 65. We are way beyond 65. This is this number is much bigger than 65. So I don't know how many 13 110 has. I have no idea how many 13 I would put here. I'm not going to waste my time to figure it out. But I do know whatever it is, whatever the hell it is, it is more than 5. This number is going to be more than 5. 5 or more. And therefore, since it's 5 or more, when you round it on nearest 10, it's going to be 0.4. That's all. So the answer here is 25.4. Let's do number 35. Number 35 says we have two functions. One is a one is a parabola that is, that is given to us, upside down parabola, and we can tell it's upside down by looking at the equation because it has a negative sign in front of it. Uh, upside down parabola has an equation that looks like this. Negative half x minus 4 whole squared plus 10. And we are told that this parabola, let me read this problem verbatim, it says f of x as it is shown uh, and g of x which we for which they, do, they do not give us a graph. It says what's the one possible value where f of a, f of a, that is equal g of a. It's just a very fancy way of saying where do they intersect. They're going to apparently intersect at more than one point, obviously two points, and they just want us to give us one, one x coordinate, one value of the x coordinate where they intersect. So, this is the first equation, and the g of x that's going to intersect f of x is this. Now in this problem, and the question is, what is one possible value of a? Now in this problem, we have two choices. One choice, which is a little bit dangerous, you have to be careful, you have to be very attentive, is to simply solve it visually, just through purely by, purely by visual inspection. What it simply means is that you look at it carefully and see where they cut each other. So let me first put the two graphs. Let me first put the two graphs. But if you're going to do that, I'm going to raise the thing, it's going to annoy me. If you're going to do that, the very first thing you have to pay attention. The very first thing we have to pay attention is make sure that the scale that is used in the two axes, x axis and y axis, are the same. And if they're not the same, that's where you have to slow down. That's where you're bound to make a mistake if you're just going to do by visual inspection. And the scale here are not the same. The scale here are not the same. 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. What happens is that on the y-axis, if you look carefully, on the y-axis it goes 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. It goes by 2. It goes by 2, but the same distance on x-axis does not go by 2. It goes by halves. Half, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, and so forth. And if that's going to throw you off, slow down, take your time. What I'm going to do here to make it easier, just because they gave us different scale, that does not mean that we are required by law to deal with two different scales. We can create our own bloody graph, can't we? So let's do that. We're going to create our own graph where we'll, where we'll use the same scale. Same scale. 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And watch what happens, okay? So this is, this is when we are solving this thing through visual inspection. Okay. Again, as always, it's supposed to go fast if one knows what one is doing. And if one doesn't know what one is doing, then one has to learn it and where it takes time. So that's why it's taking a little bit longer because I'm explaining everything. So let's deal with the let's deal with a simpler one first. I'm going to rewrite this one because it's getting too far in. G of, G of x, let's rewrite it. G of x we are told is equal to negative x plus 10. As you can see, drawing this thing is very simple. When x is equal to 0, y is 10. In other words, y intercept is 10. Immediately, we also see that when x is equal to 10, when x is equal to 10, g of x is 0. Right there. This is the x-intercept, and that's the y-intercept. Let's put the two together. This is where I have to pay attention because if I don't do a very good job, it's not going to look very nice. Now let's pick up speed and see what happens. The rest of this stuff, I'm going, to, I'm going to walk you through it and you just follow me and look at the graph in front of you. I hope you have the book in front of you. Follow me. The very first point you see is that 
the parabola that, I give, that, I, that, that they're giving us starts from here, 2, 0. And then it says, when x is equal to 2, y is 8, right here. It goes through several points, but we're not worried about it. We, I'm just going to give you the key, 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 key thing. And again, because it's symmetric, it's the parabola is symmetric, therefore, at 4, or rather at 6, at 4 it goes up to 10. At 4 it goes up to 10, and at 6 it goes back to the same value. And then when it's, when it's about 8.5, this is 9, around here, somewhere here, around 8.5, right here, at 8.5, 8 into 6. There you go. I'm going to join. Wish me luck and see what happens. The well, first point, we can clearly see where it is, right here. We don't have to go through mumbo jumbo to see where, where it cuts the other place. It doesn't matter where it cuts the other places because we only need one value of a. When a is equal to 2, the two, two functions are equal to each other. We're done. Here we're going to find a second value, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't look very accurate, it doesn't matter. We want the one value is right here. When a is equal to 2, the two function intersect. Let's look at where, the, let's see where they intersect the next one. I'll do my best, okay? Looks like somewhere here. There you go. There you go. Bye, golly. Voila. So it intersects, the two functions intersect a at when x is equal to 8, y is 2, and when, a, and, and when x is equal to 2, y is 8. There you go. So a is equal to 2 or a is equal to 8. That's where the two functions intersect each other. And that's the visual inspection. All you will do is pick up your pencil and draw a straight, straight line very carefully from 10 to 10 and you should be able to at least look at the first point very easily where they intersect and that's all it is and that's all it is because we ju we're just looking for one value as I said before even if you're unable to see where the second point is exactly as long as you look, look, look at this one you're all done so that was one way of doing it but it is tricky and it is risky the safe way is to go about it in a very traditional, very conventional, very orthodox, very classical way and that is the algebraic way, the geeky way, the nerdy way. So let's do the geeky way, the nerdy way, the algebraic way, the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, the way your math teacher will expect you to solve it. Let's do it together by algebra. And that's very simple, we set the two equations to each other and solve for x, that's all it is, that's all it is. Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. Why, why, why rewrite everything? So here is the here's the here's the f of x, and let's write down the g of x right here, which is negative x negative x plus ten. Okay. Let's begin the story. I see. I see a positive 10 and positive 10 here, positive 10 here, positive 10 here. If, if we subtract 10 from both sides, this 10 will disappear. This 10 will disappear. And then I'm not sure if I want to rewrite. If I were doing it personally myself, I wouldn't rewrite the whole thing. But just for your benefit, I'm going to rewrite it. It's a, first, I'm going to rewrite and do what, I, what I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to do it here, the same thing, without going to the baby step. Okay, let's do the baby step first. Let's rewrite it. So we get negative x is equal to negative half and x more. This is what we get. Now, if we were to if we were to multiply both sides by negative one, if we were to multiply both sides by negative one, then this would disappear. They will both become positive, which is what I was going to do here. I was just going to cross them out. This negative and this negative drops out. And this negative, this negative drops out. Now when we say this negative and this negative drop out, drops out, what we're technically doing is we're multiplying both sides by negative 1. So there we go, Neg the negative goes away. Let's pick up the story now. Next, multiply both sides by 2 so we can get rid of this 2 here. So we end up with 2x and here we end up with x minus, x minus 4 whole square which is x squared minus 8x plus 16. 
I bring the bring 2x to this side and we end up with x squared minus 10x plus 16 is equal to 0 and we simply have to solve this simple quadratic equation through factorization or through quadratic formula whatever you prefer I'm going to factorize it we're looking for two numbers we're looking for two numbers such that their sum is negative 10 and their product is positive 16 and two, two such numbers are going to be negative 8 and a negative 2 negative 8 and negative 2 when added together give us negative 10 and when we multiply them we get positive 16 so x squared negative x negative 2x plus 16 is equal to 0 and from this is x squared from this term and this term we get a common factor of x and we get x minus 8 and from this term and this term we get negative 2 as a common factor and we end up with x minus 8 again which is 0 and now we have x minus 8 as a common here and here we are left with x and a negative 2 which is 0 since x minus 8 times x minus 2 is equal to 0 which means either x is equal to 8 or x is equal to 2 either this quantity is equal to 0 or this quantity is equal to 0 and that's it, exact same thing that we found here either x is equal to 8 that's where the two functions are equal to each other or x is equal to 2 that's where they are equal to each other that was it there is one more problem on this page I'm not going to get to it right now we're going to pick up from there tomorrow if you wish to get hold of me as I said before you can do so by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com alright bye now